Ow! If you see something, say something. Here's why this is important, and especially for active shooter situations. Most shooters commit the offense at a location with which they are familiar, one where they have some relationship to the place, or possibly to others who frequent that location. And while there's not a single profile, it's common for shooters to have engaged in any number of what the Federal Bureau of Investigation calls concerning behaviors prior to the incident. A cat reading a book is unusual. A cat reading this particular book is very unusual. I would point out to you, just by watching my video on my channel, you're exhibiting unusual behavior. One type of concerning behavior is known as leakage, in which a shooter or potential shooter expresses to others that he or she is planning to commit an act of violence. Here's where it becomes important to know that most offenders don't snap, but rather plan their attacks in advance. J. Reed Malloy, one of the leaders of a field called threat assessment and his colleagues found that prior to their attacks, school shooters demonstrated a variety of warning signs. These included the development of their ideas along a pathway from fantasy to planning to preparation, an obsessive preoccupation with a particular idea or person. I'm in Canada, eh? I've seen videos where the hosts, and more often, thankfully, read comments with violent fantasy is being called for by the person who's originating the post. And I've never really seen people correct them. Adopting an association with violence, including a focus on prior offenders or attack strategies. New acts of violence, which may even seem out of character, but which may be conducted as practice or mental preparation for the attack. And a perception that violence is the only answer to a grievance or concern. How many prepper videos have you seen? How many prepper videos you see on negotiation, on human communication, not communication methods, but how to actually dialogue, how to actually negotiate, how to give up ideas, how to actually exchange information in ways that are mutually beneficial. Now you thought of that, tell me how many videos you've seen where a prepper has told you how to kill other human beings. In a study of mass shootings not limited to the school environment, Criminologists Adam Langford, Krista Atkins, and Eric Madfuss found that warning signs were common, giving further credibility to the see something, say something perspective. Who reports to whom and about who? I'm gonna tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. The confrontation between Amy Cooper and Christian Cooper in Central Park. Mr. Cooper recording with his iPhone after asking the woman to put her dog on a leash in a bird watching sanctuary. Prosecutors adding that using the police to make false claims was both racially offensive and designed to intimidate. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops. Back in May, she apologized. If it's unacceptable. Yes, very much so. She ended up facing no charges, by the way. I mentioned the term threat assessment a few moments ago. Threat assessment is the practice of receiving information about a potential threat or even just about concerning behavior that may or may not be associated with violence and then evaluating that behavior to determine the level of threat it poses and whether intervention is necessary. Educational institutions frequently have threat assessment teams. While not as common, some hospitals, businesses, and other institutions also have them. Even if a formal team is not in place, behaviors of concern can be reported to the police. Again, what's the concern? By who, where, and who is reporting the concern? And crucially, why are they reporting it? I basically think it's BS to expect the police to even handle, respond, or deal with an issue like this. They would have to actually have a really clear indicator of violence happening, like carrying an assault weapon in an area not allowed to carry one, before they'd even send anybody in. And that's typical, and you need to be prepared to deal with an active shooter on your own without policing. Threat assessment actually does result in the prevention of incidents. And in this way, the public can help to identify potential concerns that reduce violence. The third aspect of preparedness related to events of active violence is perhaps difficult to discuss, but it is important. Succinctly, it's to avoid the normalcy bias. The normalcy bias, as the name suggests, is treating potentially dangerous situations as though they're not really a threat, or trying to explain threatening behavior as something perceived as normal or innocent in nature. In her book, The Unthinkable, Who Survives When Disaster Strikes and Why, Amanda Ripley identifies this denial of a threat 
as a common first response by the public. I just want to say this is an absolutely excellent book and I do highly, highly recommend it. And I highly recommend that you actually read it. It's even got pictures. The example of the Pulse nightclub shooting illustrated this. As some patrons initially thought, the noises they heard were something other than gunfire. I'd pause here for a moment and ask you to consider, if you heard a gunshot, would you recognize it? What the? Ginger, no! <laughs> There's a tendency to think, oh, that's a firecracker, or, oh, a car must have backfired. And the reality is that if you were to listen to audio recordings of gunshots and noises that mimic gunshots, unless you have a really well-trained ear, they sometimes can sound similar, especially from a distance. None of this is to blame the public. Quite the contrary, as the normalcy bias is human nature. Make no mistake, first responders have it as well. We don't assume that the loud noise we heard was a threat, because we haven't experienced anything that would suggest it is. But this has taught us that one part of preparing for active shooter situations is to recognize noises that may indicate a threat, sounds of gunshots in particular, rather than following the normalcy bias and assuming that it must be something else. The sooner a threatening situation is recognized, the sooner that protective actions can be taken. As I've said before, the glass is neither half full or half empty. It's waiting to shatter. And no, I'm not a big budget film studio, so I'm not gonna shatter the glass. I'm just a bit thirsty. Training yourself mentally works. I always go worst case, and I figure out what I'm gonna do if worst case happens. This can drive your loved ones crazy. But over the years, it's very rare I've had to act upon worst case scenarios. It's very rare that I've had to get off a bus. It's happened, I think, twice in 30 years of bus travel in a major city, but it's well worth it. Listen to that voice, use your eyes, use your ears, and get off your butt and walk around a new area, figure stuff out. Don't be inside the nightclub when the active shooter starts shooting. Don't be in the classroom when the active shooter starts shooting. It's easy advice to say for me, but if, frankly, if you're actually in the wrong place at the wrong time, there's very little you can do. But most people around an active shooter event, and they tend to target large crowds, not just individuals, though that has happened in Canada, Montreal, specifically quite a few years ago, and that was awful, I'm not gonna go into it. But look at windows. It may be 15 feet to the ground, and it might be concrete. You can lower yourself and you can drop. You might break your ankle or strain your ankle and you'll have to crawl away. It might be worth that rather than waiting, hoping that what you're hearing and experiencing is not an active shooter event. Bearing in mind, they are rare. It's important that we do what we can to prevent these incidents. Remember, see something, say something, and difficult as it may be, that we consider how to respond to them. Until next time, be safe. So next week we're gonna get into responding to active shooter events and until then, stay safe. Toodles. This was an Irradiated Terrier production 2022.